Okay, <laughs> welcome back to Victoria and Madison, and we are talking about the biggest lesson um, that we learned this, or at least I learned, and maybe you already learned it before, <laughs> um, lesson from this weekend. So it's a bit of a story, but um, hopefully you will like it. Um, so I worked as a dominatrix for a very short period of time, um, got really good at the skill. And um, so we thought in that time I'd learned a lot about, you know, BDSM and all that stuff. So we had this idea of creating a course where we could help people learn about BDSM and domination and dominatrixes and submission and bondage and sadomasochism and all that other cool stuff. So um, we rented a dungeon in Toronto and uh, we had a camera guy who was going to record the whole thing and uh, with someone who we've worked with before and um, I, I'm so nervous <laughs> for like the last couple of days I'm like just a, a, a pent up ball of anxiety mm -hmm. and, and she's like cool it chill out <laughs> and um and so we get to the dungeon and um we got four hours to shoot this video and the um, dungeon was amazing the dungeon. the dungeon was amazing it had like it was fully equipped everything you could ever want more yeah it was crazy uh, some stuff that was like like super well made and everything else anyways so we get there and we start like having a plan of what we're going to talk about and record and all this stuff and so the camera starts rolling and I just cannot get it together. <laughs> <laughs> she'd say like two words and then she'd have to stop and walk around and breathe deeply. And I was just like, you're okay. Like, it's going to yeah. be okay. She was so good actually, by the way. Like she, she didn't like get angry or, anything, no. or she didn't like get like, I don't know. Like I, like she didn't seem disappointed in me. She was like, just talking, talking to me and like, you, I can believe in you. Just, you know, just be you kind of stuff. And I was like, okay. All right, so I start doing it again, and four hours of frustration. Well, ensues. it started to work okay when I would come and like sit on her lap, or she would be holding me, or if I was really close. But yes. then we figured out if I were to ask her questions, she could answer them. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of like go through this like when it's just me talking about the thing, which I know a lot about. I couldn't formulate a sentence. It was almost comical. And only when I just started interacting with Madison, um, like we kind of shot a scene and like we just kind of talked, it got so much better. So four hours is up. We literally leave like with like four minutes left before <laughs> we our time's up, right? And we're in the car and I'm just beating myself up. I'm like, oh, like... I had such high hopes that it was gonna be like so good and blah blah blah. And then I don't exactly know how we got on this. I think you said something. Well, a few days prior to that, I was kind of feeling like, does this align with us? Like, and I said, like, I just feel like this is distracting us from our bigger vision, from what we actually want to create. But Victoria's like, oh no, this will be a really good thing too. Yeah, because I, I know my content. So we spent three days actually writing a course out which we always still have. And it's great. And it's great content. It's, it's really like good stuff, but it's for a dominatrix. And so um, I guess when we started our actual relationship, I, oh, I we kind of went to a dungeon once or twice, and we, but it never played. We never really did it, I guess. <laughs> we never really did the dom and sub and we did a little bit of like play like when we had sex and stuff but like over the last eight months I just found myself kind of drifting away from that world and um, why didn't we do it it just felt so false because I I was like well I don't want to use a flogger on her and I don't want to I want to touch her with my hands mm -hmm. right so um, like I felt like I, I felt like the tools and the, the all that other stuff it just didn't vibe with us why do you think it vibed with you before um, 
it was definitely a shield to a degree. <laughs> um, and also it, it served me in, in, in that when at the beginning of my transition, it, it served me very well. Um, it became like a thing that I could do, but it was also a way of protecting myself from being vulnerable. So as long as I was doing the domination act and all that other stuff, I didn't have to receive pleasure or even contemplate it. So anyways, our sex life has evolved where it's still very like top and bottom and, and you know, I'm the bigger one. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Like I can still, like I still like to, she likes to still be physically dominated sometimes, but sometimes not. And I also, it's totally different for me now. So we still have sex in very much the same ways that we used to, but I now receive some of that stuff. <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's been a wonderful development anyways getting back to the story <laughs> oh did we go on a tangent yes we did okay so getting back to the story so we're in the car and we're driving away from the dungeon uh this past weekend and uh she says this thing about it not feeling right for her and i was like you know why I, and i it, it kind of clicked in my head i was like the whole time we were filming, I was in the mindset of dominatrix Victoria. I have to be the dominatrix. I have to be this person that, and then I'm like, and as soon as I stopped being dominatrix Victoria and was just myself, I got comfortable immediately. All of a sudden I was no longer Dominatrix Victoria, I was no longer stressed. All of a sudden, the words came back to me. All of a sudden, my anxiety, which was through the roof, vanished. And so, I was again almost pretending to be somebody. But what doesn't make sense is there was a time when that was, I felt that that was authentic, right? And, um, and then it kind of, I don't, it dawned on me. I was like, it's not authentic anymore. It's something that was authentic before. And we see that all the time. People evolve, people grow. Once they're one kind of person and as they grow and, you know, experiences happen, they become with somebody else. I think a good question from this story, and I'm sure she'll keep talking about it, but... <laughs> that everyone needs to ask themselves is what actions are you doing still in your life that are serving a previous version of you, but not your present or future self. We are all doing that. And those are the actions that keep us stagnant, keep us from growth, keep us be from becoming better people. There was a quote from, I forget who it was from, but it was one of my favorites. It was, um, you are not enough of the person you need to be to the person that you're trying to become. And it's so true. And the reason is we are doing actions daily that serve our past selves and not our future or present selves. So much so. <laughs> and, and then I realized that I was being loyal to a previous version of myself and holding that previous version up in some, for some reason above the person I actually am. And so this historical person, I'm being loyal to them. Why am I being loyal to them? Because it kind of feels safe, right? Um, but your current version is who you should actually be loyal to. And your future version is who you actually need to be, in the, to be loyal to. And the way you're loyal to the future person is by planning as your present person. Where you want to be, who you want to become, the next evolution, that's our job in effect, is to live for now, be loyal to now, and plan for the future. And what that looks like is 
looking at, so for me, for example, I want to be a extremely successful businesswoman, you know, what, and then I, what I would do, what I do is look at someone who is that version of me and think about what their daily habits look like. What are they doing in their day that I'm not? They're probably getting up earlier. They're probably working later. They're probably taking shorter breaks. And these are habits that I don't have. And that's why I'm not where I want to be yet. And that's such a, it's such an interesting way of seeing yourself and seeing yourself as kind of like how you want to evolve and how you want to become the person that you want to become. And, but that doesn't take away from the fact that is to be loyal to yourself and your present self above and beyond the past. Um, only thinking about how that will change in the future. And I just, I feel for me, that comes down to this place of, I am always authentic. So I constantly have to think I'm being authentic. What does that require? It requires, I think, three steps. It requires living in the moment and being authentic. It requires introspection. Someone who is introspective asks themselves the question, is this right? Is this authentic? Is this who I am? And that's something that you're constantly doing. And then depending on those answers, then you're kind of come to a challenge of, well, if it is, great, I keep this thing. If it is not, then we must evolve. And uh, Muhammad Ali, I just brought a quote from him, uh, I think it was today actually, um, and it said, if you are staying loyal to, and if you are staying stagnant for 15 years, you haven't grown in 15 years, you haven't been present in 15 years. So it's almost like this introspection requires you to just ask yourself the question and evolve. That evolution will be your path and your path to authenticity, but it's always happening. And just being introspective and asking yourself that question really gets you staying away from being loyal to a past version of yourself. And we just, my dog, the doggies are here <laughs> and they're saying hi. Um, and so if that, that, that evolution is so important we need to constantly evolve. And I guess the, maybe the most important thing for that is how do we evolve most authentically? Yeah. Right? Being authentic in the moment requires being authentic, but also realizing that we are bound to change. What's authentic for you when you're five is gonna be different than what's authentic to you when you're 10. And if you're a trans person or queer person who is she has to constantly make me stop bouncing my foot. <laughs> they can't you? see it because it's under the blanket, but I can see it. <laughs> it drives her fucking drives me crazy. Nuts. Uh, so yeah, so no, I totally lost my journey. You were saying if you're a trans person who... Yes, so if you're a queer or trans person, you've obviously gone through this um, so much so because you are not the same person you were before you came out, for example, um, yeah. or transition or this or that. Like you're always... It's such, a, it's such an obvious sign of an involvement, but really that happens. I think it applies to everybody. For sure. The mother who is loyal to herself before she has kids. You know what I mean? Uh, why would you, you know, if your life has changed, why would you stay doing the same things that worked only in the past? But your life, your situation, your you as a person are not that person anymore. So just because, so you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, and that's really easy. It's really easy to just be repetitive and just do the same thing over and over and over again. But if you're a different person, or your situation has changed, or you have evolved into a different person, then really you doing the same things from before is... Holding you back is destructive it's yeah. holding you back it's actually could be it could actually be taking you away yeah from you're actually could be doing work in reverse yeah you could be undoing good work by doing what used to be good work 
but is no longer serving you. And I think that's just the, I guess that's the, in effect, the crux of it is to always stay vigilant in chasing your authentic truth and planning for how you are going to get to your next evolution and your next goals, be that in fitness, be that in health, be that in relationships, your job, whatever. We're constantly growing and uh, that's all that matters is that you are going to let yourself get there or you're going to let yourself stagnate and there's really only one choice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for Thanks watching. Everybody. Bye. <laughs> awkward. It's super awkward.